Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having the most incredible day. If this is your first time on my channel, my name is Sebastian and I welcome you guys with open arms. Honey, I listen, I'm your new messy best friend, okay bitch? If you want a new messy best friend who's gonna spill the tea on everything pop culture, reality TV, influencer tea, honey, I got you! Make sure you hit that subscribe button, but before you hit that subscribe button, go grab a snack and a drink because I'm, I'm a lot more delightful when you have a snack, bitch, all right? Um, but listen, get comfortable because we need to talk about this iconic meeting between Ethan, Jeff, Tana, and Mike. Okay, listen, I was really excited. I was really, really anxious to watch this. I either thought it's going to go, you know, it's going to either go two ways. The police is going to get involved and then all shit is going to go to hell or... You know, they're going to make up and they're going to be very pleasant and they're going to speak what is on their mind. And honestly, they really did. I was so proud to see people who have had sort of like confrontations in the past or just like not great moments sit down and say like, hey, girl, you know what, bitch? You, you know, you really hurt my feelings here. You should not have said this, you know, because... We barely get that. You know, people online, people on social media, they love to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. But then at, at the end of the day, nothing really happens. So anyways, honey, I took notes. Okay, bitch. Listen, you would have thought I was studying to pass my bar exam. Okay. Okay. So I just have to like just start off by saying this moment that I thought was so cute. Jeff admits that he has been a huge fan of H3. He says that it was surreal. It's surreal for him to sit there. And he actually thanked Ethan for basically, he says, saving him. He says that when everything came out about the accident, Ethan was so supportive and Ethan was so there. And also his subscribers and fans were there for Jeff giving him the support he needed, you know, going after someone like David Dobrik and the vlog squad, bitch, that's like crazy, right? You, I mean, damn, right? So the fact that Ethan being so huge and having such a huge, you know, um, uh, popularity standing by him, it said, he was said he was really grateful for that. And he said that, you know, it really did like, <clears throat> it like saved him, which I thought was so cute, right? Girl, I almost choked. Um, okay, so listen, right? Uh, they they basically spoke about, you guys remember that phone call when Jeff called in and talked to Ethan and, and uh, Trisha about that night with Dom and David and, you know, the victims. Um, so he, Jeff says that that is one of the ho most horrible moments of his life. He says that basically like the backlash that he got was insane, right? He thought that that would basically end his career. He said that he felt very like blindsided with everything. He said that he was also on a lot of meds. He was going in and out of surgery. So it was very difficult for him to remember what happened that one night, you know, back in the day um, with Dom and David and the victims. Um, he, oh my God, girl, this one part, right? So he says that, the accident was kept under wraps because he was protecting this, right? And he said that he wanted to be the one to control the narrative and, and talk about it when he was ready. Well, Trisha is the first one to have talked about it and go public with it in a way. And actually, Jeff is very grateful for that because he got to speak his mind. And that is where, you know, it all, the support for Jeff and, you know, came about. It's just, it was really nice to see that, you know, even though Jeff was really, he said he was very miserable from the outcome of that phone call. You know, that phone call, I remember I was there watching and listening. I didn't know where to hide, bitch. I could not put down those damn Doritos, bitch, because I was just like, girl, this is too much. This is too cringe. And you could definitely hear that Jeff was not 100%. And, you know, he, I really do believe he called just out of a whim. You know what I mean? Um, so Ethan wanted to be a little shady and say like, girl, well then, do you thank Trisha for doing this? He doesn't really answer that, but he said he's grateful that it was brought up and it was all out in the open and that, you know, he got actually a lot of support from the H3 family. Well, um, he has a very interesting thought, um, Ethan. He says that when he was on Frenemies, 
he does not want to blame Trisha for being an asshole. He says, look, I don't even want to blame Trisha for this. I'm just an asshole, right? He talks about all his career. He's had to call, well, he's, he's called out people and he's, he's exposed people. And that he basically only calls out people that are deserve to be called out. You know what I mean? He says that he only does that. And he does say that he probably has gone too far. Tana and him obviously have had that situation. Girl, my dog. About, you know, the, the pictures where he basically like said she looks like a Twinkie. Um, so that was a very interesting conversation. Tana, you know, she did say, she po posted a tweet saying that I'm sorry if, you know, I seem a little off, but the day before this, I got dental surgery. It was really painful for me to talk, and I, but she was in a lot of pain every time she had to speak. So, but she said she didn't want to miss it. Cause you know, Tana has a little bit of a reputation, bitch. She has a little bit of a reputation to go late to things, to arrive late, to not show up, all of these things. But she did have a very good conversation with Ethan. But I did have to tell you guys that like Tana's energy, of course, she did explain why. But Tan girl, my shirt matches my pillows. I look like a damn ad for Ross. This is from Ross and these are from Ross too, bitch. Mm. Ross, dress for less, bitch. And this video is sponsored by Ross Dress For Less. Yes, Dress For Less. If you go to Ross now and use the code Sebastian, they're going to give you absolutely nothing, bitch. And don't try to take it out of the store because you're going to be arrested. Oh, and I don't have money for your bail. Okay? But use code Sebastian. Oh, my God. Um, manifesting, manifesting. Can you fucking imagine, like, you're just scrolling on TV and then you see, like, a, one of those, like, back to school uh, Ross Dress For Less commercials and I'm over there booty shaking. Girl, that would be so fucking funny. Anyways, um, girl, how did I get here? Um, they did talk about basically that, you know, Ethan wants to change. He said that because he has children, he really wants to change. But there is still a part that you have to call people out. He says there always has to be room for criticism. Look, more of the story, you guys. Um, like I was talking about Tana. Yes, Tana, bitch. Thank you. Um, she did seem a little off. She seemed a little bit like, she said, I'm just here for the vibes. I'm here for the chill. I'm here for this. Like, I forgive you. I see you a little different now. Like this and that, which is great. Ethan did say that he regrets that. He also said that Tana has never spoken ill will about him. And I really think Tana said in the beginning, she's like, I'm terrified to be here because like your fans are crazy. You know what I mean? And she's scared to be canceled. Um, listen, Mike said something that I thought was so interesting. He said, every single drama, reaction channel, uh, podcast, whatever, people who have opinions on other people, they, he said, you can watch every video under the sun, you can read any article, you can hear about anything, but you're not gonna know who, who we are until you meet us. And talking about people having an opinion, it is true, you don't know who they are, you don't know what they're really about. Now, we see actions, like we're not, you know, we can't pretend we don't see what's really going on, right? You know, like if you, if you say something inappropriate in a damn video, that's proof, so we're gonna have room to criticize and call you out. But there is a difference between calling out and being cruel. And that is something that I think maybe does need to change. And I think that Ethan saying, you know, things are different now, I have children, I want to try and be a little bit more, you know, a little bit more nicer. I don't know if you use the word nicer, but you know what I mean. Um, which I think it's great, but I also think like, listen, if you put yourself out there, unfortunately, people are always going to have opinions. And I think as long as you know how to deliver it, I don't think you're that wrong. You know what I mean? Like, deliver it with respect, deliver it nicely, and I think you're going to be okay. Um, listen, I'm probably gonna have to do a part two, bitch, because this video is already 10 minutes long. So if you want a part two of my messy fucking recap, let me know in the comments below. I, I, again, I am so, I, I'm so proud of these people. Now we just need to get Miss Trisha and Ethan to sit down, but I think that goes deeper because of family and stuff. But wouldn't that just be so crazy? Like when the baby's born that she goes back and they talk about it and they have a civil conversation like Tana and Mike and... Uh, Jeff did but I do have to say bitch to end this conversation I'm in love with Jeff like there's no there's no denying Jeff just he won my heart over honey He was so cute. He was so humble. He was so sweet. He was so soft. He was like a little baby bitch What do you guys think let me know in the comments below. I love you guys so much Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video